Welcome to our Data and Analytics podcast. This is Bill Rickleman with Kevin Mahoney. We are both from Travelers. Uh, I have a business intelligence and analytics role within the risk control department, and Kevin has a similar role within the claim organization for Travelers. We've been working with the Council of Insurance Agents and Brokers for a little while now, specifically talking to the claim and risk management working group about data and analytics, the trends that we're seeing in the marketplace, and specifically how we're using it to help our business uh, in- improve. Based on those conversations, we're going to have a series of podcasts. The first one today is just going to be around the current trends and the general philosophies we have around our analytics and our advanced analytics. The following podcast will talk about some diagnostic analytics as well as predictive modeling. And then finally, we'll wrap up with some Internet of Things and talk about some different experiments that we were seeing out in the marketplace and just a lot of the trends that we all see on our day-to-day emails that we're getting. Sounds exciting, Bill. Yeah, no, it, hopefully that will be good. We we do have some interesting things going on. On the first slide here, just to kick it off, uh, I wanted to start by talking about the changing risks and risk prevention opportunities. We do uh, a lot of work within risk control to understand our risk and, and how those risks change. It's important for us to understand our customers as they evolve and mature as a business. So we pull together a lot of data from across the organization and from across our proprietary risk control information to help understand what's changing and when it's changing. We're going to hit uh, third-party data in a, in a little bit. Uh, internal data is table stakes now for competitors. Those market leaders who are best able to use outside data on their, on their customers are most likely to improve their business. Uh, what goes along with data is data security. I think we can all probably appreciate that uh, we receive every every six months or so something in the mail saying that our data has been breached. What goes along with collecting more data and bringing more data in is protecting that personally identifiable information for, for customers and so a huge focus in the industry. Machine learning and artificial intelligence are, are certainly buzzwords, uh, but those companies who are best able to use machine learning and advanced analytics and who are uh, exploring artificial intelligence to make their interactions with customers more seamless. They're the ones who uh, have the best uh, look into the future. Yeah. From a a customer expectation perspective, all of this data that's coming around the place is being leveraged by companies to provide a better experience. When I I go onto my Amazon account and I need to order some more dog food, I type in D and I feel like the dog food is already up there in my cart ready to be ordered. So You must buy a lot of dog food. I unfortunately do. Those interactions are great and and they make you want to come back and they make you want to be uh, more attached with that company. So really within insurance, we're we're probably a little bit lagging. And and right now we're spending our time and efforts on building up some of those capabilities to make that a better customer experience. Yep, We're hearing more and more about another buzzword, big data. Uh, You can think of it uh, as the cloud, Hadoop, uh, different technologies that are helping us consume larger and larger data sets. Uh, whether it's web data, image data, speech to text, uh, we we have more and more data that we're trying to consume, and technology is helping us do that in a more efficient fashion. Uh, the Internet of Things, I mentioned the the kickoff there that we will have a podcast where we dig into it, but we are seeing a lot of interesting companies come out of fintech or insurtech incubators. There's a, a a lot of our customers out in the field as our risk control professionals are talking to to customers. They ask us questions about it, and sometimes they're wanting to test it. And so we're working with them, partnering with our customers to see what different sensors might work in their operations and their companies to help them provide a safer work environment for their employees. And as a last item, industry agnostic skill sets. One of the challenges I think all of us face is finding the right talent to help us consume data and analytics. People can dig into data sets and and pull out the insights. and some of the challenges for us are obviously we work in the insurance industry, but the talent that we're trying to bring in can work in just about any industry because analytics is, is so pervasive. So we have to find new ways to identify talent, bring it into the insurance industry, whether that's an insurance company or an agent or a broker, but then also retain that talent. Not many people say that they grew up wanting to work in the insurance industry, probably not the, the sexiest industry out there, but Uh, Once you're able to get into insurance, and especially if you're a data and analytics person, 
it's very interesting. And so being able to communicate that to new talent as they're coming out of college to let them understand how interesting it really can be to be insurance and be in that data analytics role. Moving on to the next slide, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about third-party data. As I mentioned earlier, uh, internal data is pretty much table stakes, and the, the competitors who are well-equipped to use analytics are pulling in uh, third-party data sources to get the most value. What we're also seeing as a trend in the third-party data industry is consolidation. So bigger uh, data aggregators are, are buying up uh, smaller third-party data vendors who have found niche markets with, with smaller data sources. The data aggregators want to pull in these data sources to improve their own products. And then we're also seeing in the vendor space more and more of these smaller companies who are uh, finding new and interesting ways to, to collect data. So whether you're an insurance company or a broker, uh, it's incumbent on you to keep up in the vendor space and understand what third-party data offerings are out there. Yeah, and they seem to be doing a, a lot with the data. They're not just going to try to provide you with the square footage for the building because they're able to pull it off of a public website, but they want to be able to build their own proprietary risk scores um, and, and underwriting scores to try to complement the, the insurance industry, and they see a huge market opportunity. So being able to understand uh, what they're bringing to you and, and what they're trying to sell you, it, it can be challenging at times. Yep, and it's not just vendors either. So uh, we see government and municipalities who are who are putting more and more data out on the internet free of charge. So data.gov is a federal website. Uh, we see some municipalities, New York City, Los Angeles, even some smaller cities who are making their data publicly available. Um, a challenge for uh, everyone is how to consume data that comes from all of these, uh, these different sources. Uh, and uh, again, I think data aggregators are going to be a key here because they're going to do all the grunt work of pulling together all this disparate information and, and normalizing it into one, uh, one data set to be consumed. I look forward to that. If we look at our, our analytics continuum across risk control and claim, you know, to focus on the, the bottom left there uh, to start out, the information delivery, um, maybe not as, as sexy as some of the other things Kevin will talk about in a second, but still pretty powerful and, and still pretty valuable. When we went down and spoke with some of the, the claim and risk management professionals at the council last fall, some of the, the smaller agents and brokers really articulated that it's a challenge for them to provide insight on an industry or, or trends just because their book of business isn't, isn't broad enough to be able to segment it out for the food manufacturing or for warehousing or oil and gas. It, travelers were fortunate to have that breadth. So we're really able to aggregate a lot of information uh, from a risk control perspective, from a policy perspective, obviously, as well. But to be able to bring that together so that we can share it with our, our customers and our agents and brokers and articulate to them what are some of the exposures that we typically see, how do we see different um, customers address those with controls, and, and really be able to bring best practices to them through data. Bill, to follow on with, with what you said, uh, the information delivery aspect is pretty key. Just doing a good job with that is, is important, whether you're an insurance company or an agent or a broker. Uh, understanding your data and being able to, to read out and get some important insights uh, provides a lot of value to your company. But then taking it to the next level, being able to use that data in a way where we look at the historical data and use it to predict the future, that's also pretty valuable. And when you combine uh, the ability to predict likely outcomes with a workflow that allows you to take action in the right way. That's how you use analytics to really optimize, whether it's the claim handling process uh, or, or risk control. To build on that, if we look at um, how we're bringing data across the different organizations and travelers, that's really where our scale can really pay off. Uh, we have a great claim organization with a lot of data, folks on your team, uh, really talented people that are, are able to pull that information together. When we're able to combine that with some risk control information and, and aggregate some of the information that our folks see when they're out there in the field, we're able to get even more value. And then if we're able to bring in our lab organization, um, and some of the forensic analysis that they might have for us or maybe information that they have from industrial hygiene uh, analytics. We can bring all these things together and provide deep insight as far as what's happening at accounts in different industries 
across different claims to really help us provide better service to those customers at the end of the day. We pride ourselves on our risk service, and a lot of that is built on claim information, on our, our lab analytics and the leading research that they do, and being able to bring that back to our customers and help them understand the severity of the risk that they have in, in their companies and, and how to best control it. Yeah, knowledge is power, whether you're a claim professional, uh, an account executive, uh, or or one of our customers. The better that we can provide that information, I think the, the better outcome you, you land on. Yes. So this was our first podcast. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, again, I'm, I'm Bill Rickleman here with Kevin Mahoney. Um, hopefully you'll come back for the next one in a couple of weeks when we, when we lay it out for data analytics, the data diagnostics, and uh, we'll talk to you then. Thank you.